A virtual reality interface takes Flynn into a realistic simulation. However, when it affects her real life, she wonders if the game is beyond a simulation. In 2099 in London, miniature ships fire at each other on the lake when a barefooted young woman named Elita approaches Wilf. He complains about the mess she got herself into, but Elita points out that he's the one who made dangerous friends. Elita recalls going six months without shoes, noting how the soles of one's feet adapt to the environment, much like how one's souls change. She then mentions how when she found him, she vowed to save him. Wilf thinks she did, but Alita disagrees, although she's saving a world now. Wilf argues that she believed that their world was past saving, but Alita clarifies that she's saving another world. She then bids him goodbye but remains seated as she's now transfixed in another reality. In 2032, Flynn Fisher attends to her blind mother, Ella reminding her not to give her meal to her brother. Ella defends that she wasn't hungry yesterday, but Flynn reminds her that if she lost weight, she'd end up in the hospital again. Then she checks Ella's medicine and sees that her tamosine has been switched to a lower dosage. Suspicious, she goes to her brother's trailer and sees Burton playing a virtual game. She accuses him of swapping and stealing their mother's medicine, which he doesn't deny. He claims he could get money to buy one dose if she helps him in his game. He adds that he has another game tonight that'll pay bigger, so it can cover the rest of the medicine. Out of options, she agrees to stand in for him while he goes to pee. Burton explains that he and his friend, Reese, were hired to get another player past level 20. With that, Burton heads out and Flynn logs into the game using his character, Easy Ice. Entering the virtual reality, she sees that they're in the middle of a gunfight in a barn full of sheep. Pitying the animals, she shoots the door to let them out, then fires at the enemies outside. Reese realizes that Flynn is using Burton's character, so he tells her that they're looking for the enemy's map. Flynn then uses a brick to press the gas pedal on the barn's tractor, directing it into the enemy. As the tractor crashes, she shoots a flare into the hay on the back, burning it. A smoke obscures their adversary's vision, allowing Flynn to kill them efficiently. When she turns, an enemy shoots her in the shoulder, so she throws a knife at his chest. With that, she searches the enemy's pocket and finds the map, thus completing the mission. Logging off, she sees Burton return, so Flynn commands him to send the money to her before she leaves for work. Later, Flynn stops at an ATM to withdraw cash when Officer Tommy pulls over behind her. She sarcastically wonders if Homeland Security is worried about withdrawing money, but Tommy points out that people who use cash are usually up to something. Smiling at an old friend, he then asks about Ella, to which Flynn assures him that she's okay. He then shares that he dropped off his fiancé's order for their wedding cake toppers, and Flynn suddenly excuses herself to go to work. At the 3D printing shop where Flynn works, her friend, Billy Ann, teases her about Tommy. Their co-worker, Macon, comes in, wondering about Tommy's order, until Flynn points out that he misread the form. Realizing this, he snaps the excess groom topper and leaves. Billy Ann then rambles about how Flynn's skills are suited for a better paying job like Burton assisting rich guys in games. She comments that she could get away with it if the clients don't discover that she's a girl. However, Flynn is done playing as she wants to focus on reality. Billy Ann drops the topic and encourages Flynn to tell Tommy how she feels before his wedding. Later, Flynn takes out the trash when she sees the excess groom topper, reminding her of what Billy Ann said. Then, Macon and their co-worker, Edward, present her with a remote piloting virtual reality headset that Burton ordered, paid for by a Colombian company called Milagros Calderon. The device is expensive and without a patent, so Edward wonders if Burton's working illegally, which Flynn doubts. Macon then asks her to scan for custody as the customer requested, so she does an eye scan. When Flynn arrives home, Burton takes the headset, explaining that it's a cutting-edge virtual reality and testing it will earn them enough to survive for months. Flynn wonders why he was chosen, but Burton reveals it was her who reached the top level using his avatar, thus earning the company's attention. Knowing what he means, Flynn refuses to test the device. Burton insists that it would pay for their mother's medicine, stressing that he's proud of her for achieving so much in the game. This makes her reconsider, so Burton adds that she'll earn more the longer she stays in the game. She wonders if she needs to be a killer, so her brother assures her they only need an achiever and explorer, which are her fortes. Finally, she agrees to try it, so Burton assists her as she puts on the headset. With that, Flynn closes her eyes and continues down as the game begins. Flynn enters the game as Easy Eyes, riding a motorcycle in London. A voice welcomes her to the sim. Flynn is ecstatic about how she feels everything in the game, but the voice warns that she'll also feel pain. Following the voice's instruction, Flynn stops at an entrance around Buckingham Palace and declares that she's arrived, which opens the door automatically. Upon entering, two robot concierges direct her to the hall. Curious, she somersaults forward, realizing she can move and feel Easy Ice's body as if it were hers. The voice then leads her to the garden where there's an annual company party of the Research Institute. Her first task is to identify the prettiest woman at the party. 
When Flynn chooses a young woman named Mariel who's sitting alone, the voice approves because she's of high status. It instructs her to convince Mariel to leave with her if she wants to get paid. As she approaches, the lady is flattered by the stare but suspicious. Flynn reasons she's trying to imagine being Mariel but can't because she's so beautiful. Impressed, Mariel asks the player to sit, swishing her finger as a force mutes the noise around them, giving them a private bubble. When she asks for the player's name, Flynn instead tells her to skip the pleasantries and leave together now to avoid wasting time. This convinces Mariel. Outside, Mariel's car arrives, and the voice warns Flynn the robot driver is programmed to kill if Mariel is harmed. While kissing in the back seat, the player is instructed to hold a glass ampoule under the victim's nose while remaining vigilant of the driver. As soon as Mariel's knocked out, the robot driver pulls Flynn in front and attacks. She kicks the steering wheel to throw the robot off, but it takes a knife from the visor. She kicks and steals the weapon, but the robot easily blocks her attacks while still focused on the road. The driver steals the knife back, so Flynn redirects its hand to hold the knife over the steering wheel, then hits the brakes. The sudden stop pushes the robot forward, stabbing itself in the head. With that, the voice commands her to keep moving. As it continues to direct her, the voice muses over the power of planting words in the player's head, comparing it to sowing seeds in fertile soil. Soon, Flynn arrives at a tunnel and declares her arrival, making the walls vanish. From the other side, a woman reveals herself as the voice and the master of the game. She asks if Flynn would stop the game and change her life if she knew she would exist in a decade. The player just comments how the master is easier to follow as a voice in her head. She asks what's next, and the woman says they'll resume tomorrow. With that, Flynn wakes up. Thrilled, she tells Burton the sim feels real. He responds that she must have done it right as the company wants her to return and they've increased their offer. Flynn is excited, but when she gets up, she becomes lightheaded and questions the headset's safety. Concerned, Burton offers to pick up their mom's medicine while she rests. She insists on doing it as she also needs fresh air. At the bar, an amputee named Connor drinks, but the bartender cuts him off. Flynn enters and catches the attention of four men, Atticus, Buddy, Jasper, and Cash. Atticus and Buddy follow her outside, where Flynn asks to buy one Tamozine. However, they don't sell it in pieces, so Atticus offers to sell her one if Flynn does an extra service. A drunk Connor pulls up his motorized wheelchair, demanding the men to give what the young lady asked for. Cash arrives and tells Connor to mind his own business. Connor, however, stresses that his disability means he's got nothing else to lose. Knowing what's to come, Flynn advises the others to walk away. Just then, Connor throws an empty bottle with precision into a distant trash can, showing off his skills. He chuckles as he claims that with his weapon, the worst thing that'll happen would be killing only two out of three men. The men realize he's serious, so they relent and give Flynn the pill. As they leave, Cash remarks that Connor should have died, which the man agrees to. When the trio return to the bar, they find their boss, Mr. Pickett. Outside, Connor checks in on Flynn. When he asks about Burton, she invites him to drink with her brother. He doesn't respond and instead offers her help with her bike since it's low on battery. Meanwhile, Pickett reprimands the men for allowing a drunk cripple to bully them. He offers Cash a drink to calm his nerves but slams his face on the table, smashing the glass on his face. He warns his men not to look weak again, as it makes him look weak too. Soon, Flynn approaches her brother's trailer to give him beers but sees him dealing with strange wounds on his back. Giving him space, she quietly leaves the beers and walks away. The following day, Flynn washes Ella's hair while thinking of the sim. Ella notices that she's distracted, but her daughter says she's thinking of asking Billy Ann to drop by. Ella comments on how she dislikes Billy Ann's relationship with Jasper, who's Pickett's nephew. Changing the topic, Flynn asks her mom about the pain. Ella reveals that Burton gave her his pain medication, claiming he didn't need it anymore. This makes Flynn feel concerned and guilty about her brother. In his trailer, as Burton sets up the headset, Flynn mentions seeing him last night. He knows and appreciates the beer but teases that it should have been cold. Flynn then apologizes for her accusations, offering to discuss his pain with her. Burton disregards this, so Flynn senses that he doesn't want to discuss it. He then makes fun of his sister for being excited to resume the game, and Flynn admits that she thinks it'll be huge. As she closes her eyes, she returns to the sim, only to find herself strapped to a table. The skin around her eye is sterilized as the master warns that only she can end the game, not the player. She hints that Mariel's eyes will be hers, promising that the terrible pain Flynn will endure is for a noble cause. Flynn's actual body flinches as she feels the pain from the sim. A doctor prepares to extract Easy Eye's left eye and the master instructs Flynn to convince her mind that it's all imaginary. Despite the horrors, the girl pushes the fear, reminding herself that it's a simulation. Eventually, the eye is extracted and Flynn loses consciousness. 
She wakes up in a car with the master, who admires Mariel's eye on her, which she'll use to open doors for her. Arriving at their next destination, Flynn uses Mariel's eye on the scanner to gain access to a building. While riding an elevator, she asks where they are, but the master simply quotes a poem, infinity in the palm of your hand, eternity in an hour. Soon, the elevator stops, and they approach a door. The master comments that she hopes the player deserves the gift she's giving her. They enter a room with an inverted pyramid surrounded by flowing water. On the tip is another scanner, and the woman asks if Flynn is ready to claim her destiny. Confused, Flynn uses Mariel's eye for the scanner, but the master says to use her own. When she does, the scanner causes immense pain, making her flinch. However, the woman restrains her until it's done scanning. Suddenly, another man enters the room, and the master tells Flynn that he's there to kill them. With that, Flynn tries to punch the intruder, but he quickly evades her. He hits her back, and as she falls on the floor, he ties her arm to her leg. As the intruder looks at the master, he sees her profile through his eyes, revealing her name as Elita West. She tries to attack him, but he knocks her down with a weapon that delivers a sonic punch. He threatens her into revealing who else is involved in her plans, and when she refuses, he shoots her liver. Just before he shoots Alita in the head, Flynn forces her hand off the restraint, causing the flesh to tear. To her surprise, under the flesh is a mechanical hand. Ignoring this, Flynn goes for the intruder, but he knocks her down. He recognizes that Easy Eyes isn't her real name, and threatens to kill her and trace her connection if she doesn't confess. The man pulls the trigger, but she avoids it and knocks him down. When he recovers, the intruder punches her while Alita runs. Noticing this, the intruder aims for Alita, but Flynn pulls his hand to make him shoot the ground. The shockwave knocks him back, but he throws Flynn on the wall and shoots her avatar in the head. Flynn wakes up in Burton's trailer and rushes to the door to vomit. When he asks what happened, she responds, never again, and leaves. The next day, Billy Ann visits and finds her still in bed, so she tries to help prepare her clothes for work. She discovers a mended Tommy groom topper in the drawer and teases Flynn. The young woman quickly retrieves the figurine, but her friend asks if she's down because of Tommy. Flynn defends that her 7th grade crush on the officer is stupid and nothing will happen between them. Instead, Flynn shares about the sim, where she felt like she was actually there. However, the people there tormented her. She also keeps thinking about the mechanical hand, wondering why the sim was designed that way when their point was to make the game realistic. Because of this, she feels as if she was in a real body in a real place. At work, she receives a call from Wilf, who works for Milagros Calderon. He warns that she's in grave danger as her experience with the headset is complicated and dangerous. However, Flynn is suspicious and tells him not to call again. Meanwhile, an officer observes a group of men at the gas station refilling two cars. When they finish, he follows them, but they disappear around a corner. He pulls over to investigate, but one of the men suddenly holds him at gunpoint and instructs him to step on the road. The officer follows, and an invisible force hits him. The cars materialize out of nowhere and leave the officer's body. In the shop, Flynn turns off the printers, but they suddenly turn back on. A message from Wilf appears, saying it is important for her to log into the sim. He adds that a $9 million bounty was posted on the dark web targeting her and her family. He promises to assist her as long as she's in the sim. Scared, Flynn runs. At home, Burton and his ex-marine friends drink by the fire. They discuss how they received intel that could have helped Connor avoid the bomb that blew off his limbs. Despite the guilt, Burton thinks the situation was complicated. Flynn arrives and tells Burton that Wolf called about a bounty on their family. He and his friends laugh, but Burton promises to call Wolf tomorrow. Flynn insists he calls him tonight, but he declines because he has company. When she leaves, Burton explains that he's testing a sim, though his friends know Flynn uses his avatar. They wonder if his sister's situation is similar to Connor's. When they ignored Connor's warning, it turned out he was right, resulting in the accident. Burton reflects on this, so he suggests using drones to check. Inside, Flynn assists her mom to bed and tells her that Tommy asked about her. Ella chuckles as since she became blind, her mental picture of Tommy, Burton, and all the others are of those when they were kids. When Ella hears noise outside, Flynn checks and sees the men playing with their drones. After putting her mother to sleep, Flynn checks on the guys and Burton shares that they're taking extra precautions. To everyone's surprise, the drones detect movement in the woods. The monitor captures 12 individuals approaching the Fisher's home. This confirms that Flynn and her family are indeed being hunted. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.